Uh, hi, and welcome to another episode of Playing with Prologue. This week, we're uh, experimenting with CP Lent and terrain generation with our very special guest, Dr. Fabrizio Griguzzi of the U University of Ferrara. And nice to, to be here. Uh, please call me Fabrizio. Hi, uh, nice to see you both today. Okay, so Fabrizio, um, this looks like a really interesting program where we're, we, as I understand it, we're going to generate a, a tiled map where we're, we've got four different tiles, I think, and we're putting constraints on what's happening in each square. Um, so do you want to talk me through the program and explain um, how the, um, the predicates work to generate these maps? So we have two versions. So the version with constraint, with soft constraint, was okay, but was very slow because okay. uh, you have to you have a conditional probability. You you do a rejection sampling, so you you keep on uh, sampling until the constraints are satisfied. So it would uh, take about uh, a few thousand samples before getting the map. So now, I, so the same effect could be achieved much quicker by simply uh, changing the sampling type for depending on the on the area where you sample. You have uh, the usual uh, import uh, directives that uh, specify the module to be loaded and uh, specify uh, um, a code. Uh, a module for rendering tiles uh, on screen as maps. Then you have, so you're using library making tile, which is a library for performing approximate inference by sampling. So we need this library because we, we are going to generate maps by taking samples. And in particular, the map will be generated by taking one sample from a program. The program is, uh, is uh, here. So you first have to include the directory NC, which means that the following code should be interpreted by McIntyre. Then you have a directive to uh, denote the beginning of the probabilistic program. So uh, as you can see, it uses uh, foldel, the foldel predicate, which is, uh, which is uh, an aggregate predicate. And uh, uh, this foldel predicate applies this, uh, called this uh, predicate select, which uh, selects rows from row one to the number of rows, which is H, okay? For each row, then you, 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 you have, um, again, a call to fold L, which uh, calls uh, the predicate pick row, which uh, is uh, in charge of picking tiles one by one. Picking tiles, in effect, is made by predicate pick tiles, pick tile, which takes as input uh, the, the, the height and the width of the, of the map, and uh, the... Okay, so Fabrizio, do you, do you think you can explain what um, sampling is in, in this context of a, a logic program? So sampling for a probabilistic logic program means uh, uh, recording uh, the values of uh, random variables. So when you have uh, probabilistic logic programs, you uh, you have a, a, a probability distribution over programs, and this turns uh, into a probability distribution over arguments of, uh, prog of uh, predicates. You could have uh, a predicate where one of the argument uh, is uh, constrained in taking a value from a finite set of values, and each time you call the predicate, you get a different value. The return value is not deterministic, it's probabilistic. It may be different in different runs. So, uh, in this case, for example, to generate a map, we want to generate a map which uh, tends to have a lake in the center. In particular, uh, we want to generate a map where the center tile is always water and the tiles around it are, are more likely water than other. So in this case, peak tile is, is defined by three clauses, the first of which uh, is a deterministic clause, okay? which states that if 
the row and the column uh, uh, are equal to the height and the width divided by two, then the tile is water, and this is a regular prolog clause, so there is no uncertainty in it. So this is a deterministic clause, because the central tile is water always. On the other hand, the second clause instead is different. And uh, the difference is that you have a clause which uh, you have uh, the head atom, which is followed by the, the column, and then uh, um, an atom expressing a probability distribution. This atom expresses the fact that the, the variable t follows a discrete distribution with this, this with this distribution. So uh, the, the, the argument t is grass with probability 0 0.05, water with probability 0.9, a tree with probability 0 0.025, and a rock with probability 0 0.025. This clause uh, uh, has a body which says that uh, this clause applies only when the row and the column indicated by y and x here uh, belong to a central area. The central area is a predicate defined below which uh, uh, is meant to indicate the area uh, around the central tile. And as you can see in the body, you have a cut, and, and you have a cut as well in the clause before, meaning that to choose a tile, you first try the clause, you try the clauses in order, okay? And the first clause which matches returns the tile. So if the, the, the tile is the central one, you got water for sure. If the tile is in the central area, so it's not in the center, but around the center, you get a distribution with water highly probable and this is the, the the meaning of the sentence that the tile the map contains uh, t tends to contain a lake in the center and if the tile is not in the central area then the distribution of the tile types is different so thanks uh Fabrizio, for explaining that that really makes sense that in cpl the, the, the column is used to indicate uh, some um some uh, relation to probability. So in this case, you use the atom discrete, which uh, states that for variable t, which is uh, also present in the in the in the head atom. The head atom is this one. Okay, so this is the specification of uh, probability distribution over this head atom. So this uh, this uh, syntax indicates that uh, for the variable t, you have uh, a probability distribution with these values, and each value is followed by its probability. And as you can see, the probabilities sum up to one, meaning that uh, for this variable, one of these values should be picked with the respective probability. So uh, to run the query and generate effectively a map, you, you can use this predicate, which is called MC sample arg first, which means that uh, MC meaning that you're using McIntyre and so Monte Carlo. You sample an argument of, of a predicate, which is the predicate map, and you sample. So you uh, the, the first uh, uh, keyword means that you want to 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 sample arguments for the query, and you want to pick the first answer of the query because a query in Prolog. In probabilistic prolog, as in prolog uh, itself, can have more than one answer. So here you are interested in the first answer. So the query is the query is about the predicate map, which takes uh, as input the the height and the width of the map, which are fixed in ten by ten, and then it returns the map in a variable m. So this is sample are first. Uh, uh, takes the, the the goal to query as first argument, the number of samples to take, one in this case, so we want to generate a single map, and the, the argument you want to sample, which is M, so you want to sample the, the map. Uh, actually, this uh, MC sample at first predicate uh, returns a list of uh, values, because usually you you take more than one sample, so it returns the list of uh, 
of value together with their, uh, the number of time he, he has appeared in the, the sample. So in this case, the result is a list. And uh, since you take one sample, it contains a single element. And you want the first element of the, of the, of the couple, which is a map. So if you now click on the run button, it will generate um, a map which uh, uh, is 10 by 10. And as you can see, the center tends to be occupied by, uh, by water. OK, so what else can we um, do with uh, CP Lint? So uh, with CP Lint, uh, we, you can take uh, samples of arguments of probabilistic programs, like in this case, or you can uh, compute the probability with which a query is true, OK? Uh, and in that case, instead of uh, uh, getting terms uh, for the value sample, you are interested in, uh, in the fraction of times a query succeeds. And so you're interested in getting a number between 0 and 1. But besides this, you can also use CPLint for learning. So you can uh, uh, analyze data and get a program that describes uh, the domain uh, that the data came from. I could possibly have lots of maps that I've made, and I could use the machine learning to learn the parameters of um, which tiles are grass, water, tree, and rocks from my data. Is that correct? So you can perform uh, machine learning uh, basically uh, of two kinds. So you can, um, given a probabilistic program and data, uh, you can uh, learn the parameters. You can tune the parameters of the program on the on the basis of data. And um, in this case, uh, as for inference, you get uh, uh, you have to um, insert the data in a single file that loads the learning library, which is called the slip cover in this case. And then, by with the simple directive, you you isolate the portion of the of the of the file that contain uh, the data, the uh, possible background knowledge, and maybe uh, parameter settings, and so on. And you can also perform both parameter and structure learning. In that case, you you use data to generate both parameters and uh, the the structure of the rules. So thank you very much, uh, Fabrizio, for uh, talking me through the C blend. Uh, it looks like a really amazing tool. Okay, thank you very much, Sam and Anne, and uh, goodbye. That's it for another week of Playing with Prologue, this week with C.P. Lint and Dr. Fabrizio Raguzzi of the University of Ferrara.